Nice, Sam. FSN Southwest. Here he comes, wide around his own right side in the rain and the mud, and down he goes. But believe me, those 11 yards, he says, were worth that mud bath. Nineteen sixty three will go down as one of the more memorable football seasons in Southwest Conference history. The Longhorns won four close games on their way to winning the school's first national championship. Baylor All American quarterback Don Truel led the nation in passing while leading the Bears to the Blue Bonnet Bowl. For the next thirty minutes, we're going to relive that sixty three season with a little help from the legendary voice of the Southwest Conference, Kern Tips. From the top, back to that early day in Fayetteville when Arkansas, the preseason favorite, took on TCU, first conference game for both. And then Arkansas bingos on the long bomb. Freddie Marshall throws. But Jerry Lamb fight it out of the air and bring it down a 56-yard touchdown nugget. Arkansas leads six to nothing. And then TCU begins to move the ball. First, Jim Fulver swings to the outside and turns the right side corner for a 12-yard patch to the Arkansas 41. And then the Frogs launch their busiest aerial day. Here's Gray Mills to hit Tommy McGoffin crossing downfield for 14 yards, but TCU ran out of downs on the Arkansas 19-yard line and had to go for the field goal. Watch Jimmy McAteer hit the bullseye for a 37-yard three-pointer. Now it's Arkansas 6, TCU 3. And that's the way it was late in the fourth quarter when TCU's Randy Howard tried for the distance. Here you'll see Ronnie Cabin is intervene, and suddenly it's Arkansas on TCU's 21 yard line. And here's the belly play for the touchdown as Gray rides home. Arkansas scored again, and the final score Arkansas 18, TCU 3. That night in Lubbock, Texas Tech tangled with the Texas Aggies. The cadets Keller kicks to Bill Worley, and the Raiders start a drive from their 41. And look now at one of the year's fine sophomores, Tex Donnie Anderson on a swinging thing. Ramblin' reversed behind a good tide of blocks that moves 26 to the Aggies, 46. I was a baseball player, so I, I liked it, but I you know, never thought about being a college football player. And I thought about being playing for the Boston Red Sox or somebody like that. That was St. Louis Cardinals. That was my passion at the time. Then a picture play for the tally. Ben Illich gets a good set and fires. Tremendous fingertip diving catch by David Parks, and now it's Tech 10, Aggies nothing. Well, that was all the scoring, but not all the action. And then with 39 seconds to play, Lindstetter tries a jump pass. Lowry hits him, Park recovers, and that was it. Texas Tech 10, Aggies nothing. This was the night Don Truel put the passing show on the road. Arkansas's Glenn Ray Hines kicks off to Baylor's Henry Pickett, and we're off and pass it. Throws to Elkins after the fake pass option. The pigskin slides through. Gary Howard intercepts, and Arkansas makes this break pay off fast. From the Baylor 28, Billy Gray measures Jerry Lamb for size, and Jerry takes it low and inside for a 13 yard gain to the Bears' 15 yard line. And then on fourth down, Tommy the Toe McNally steps to the tee, bangs one through the uprights, 32 yards, and Arkansas leads 3 0. Then Mr. Toole takes charge. Shooting from both hips, first a flat pass to Henry Pickett for 11, the Bears near midfield, and then Ken Hodge is on the receiving end of this true trolley, gets a sore back to show for it, but this is good for 19 to the Arkansas 34. And then True steps into the pocket three times for three shots. This first one goes to Jim Ingram for nine to the Porker six-yard line. Well, you know exactly what Baylor's up to, but what do you do about it? And then the Don and Lawrence show polishes the apple. Elkins is clear in the flat, and that's a touchdown. Baylor 7, Arkansas 3. Now step downstairs and watch the close-up action. This is Jim Lindsay letting you sample the action at right tackle, a six-yard slammer to the Baylor 4. So the fullback bangs it home. Charlie Daniel fights the traffic jam for the distance. It's Arkansas 10, Baylor 7. Then comes a deadly backfire on Arkansas as Gray tries a pass. Delgado blocks it. Come to Papa, says Bobby Crenshaw. Fairly stylish running for the big guy to the Arkansas 14 yard line. Two Lel Elkins are up to their old tricks. Don completed 21. Lawrence caught eight of them, and this one closed the book. Baylor 14, Arkansas 10. 
Up next, we relive the 1963 TCU Texas Tech game, and the Rice Owls give the Longhorns all they can handle. Check it out, gas prices blowing up sky high. Ditch my used subcompact for a two-wheeled ride. Now I'm rolling eco-friendly, but I still look bad. When the bike store saw my credit, they said this was all they had. I'm singing F to the R to the E to the E to the C to the R to the E D I T. Free to the port, to the dot, to the com. Come on, everybody, grab your bike and sing along. It's easy. F to the R. Offer applies with enrollment and triple advantage. Hey, Bill. How's it going? What is that? It's my new bike and the amazing protection plan I got for it. Yeah! There's an easier way to protect your motorcycle. Call GEICO. They insure all types of vehicles. GEICO Power Sports. Insurance for your car and the other stuff that moves you. Time now for the Vault Sports Update. Vault drinks like a soda, kicks like an energy drink. Get to it! The Astros make their final visit to Shea Stadium. The story of game one in a moment. I guess we'll take uh, Morty. Yes! Pick last. Ouch. A vault will put you back on top. Quenches and kicks. Incoming! Yeah! Super Soda Mercenary! Vault. Drinks like a soda, kicks like an energy drink. Get to it! First of four between the Astros and New York Mets, and Brian Schneider reaches out and gets this one. A two run shot made it 3 0 Mets in the second inning. Roy Oswald would not allow another base runner the rest of the game. He pitches a complete game, but the Mets win 3 0. That's your Vault update. home for Astros baseball is FSN Houston. Cecil Cooper Strollers wrap up the road trip in the Big Apple for one final series with David Wright and the High Flying Mets. Astros, Mets on FSN Houston. This same night at Lubbock, TCU's Tommy Crutcher struck a blow for fullbacks everywhere as we'll see. As we pick up early action, let's open with the big noise. Tommy Joe on a trap up the middle. This 34-yard piece of bombast gains the Raiders' 24-yard line. Somewhat less bulky, but no less authoritative. Jim Forber adds a seven-yard patch. Oh, he gets his lumps on the Tech 17. And then Tommy Joe Crutcher slashes home two plays later. Here he goes for 11 yards on the touchdown. First time the Froggies got the ball. This makes it TCU 7-0 in this early going. A little later, TCU finds a new use for the hammer guy. Gray Mills finds Crutcher over on the right side, zeroes in. This time, Tommy Joe becomes the other half of a 53-yard pass and run play to Tech's 20-yard line. And then finally, it's Crutcher to throw a key block. Watch here as number 38 clears the path for Mills and a touchdown, TCU 13-0. Another good Red Raider drive comes to grief, but first, Jim Ellis and Roger Gill collaborate on a nice pattern. This play gets a fast 20 yards on a spot on TCU's 9-yard line. Jim got dropped for a 10-yard loss, but here he comes right back with a 10-yard gainer. Dave Parks hooks for this catch inside the TCU 10-yard line, and then it is Crutcher to lower the boom on Tech. Here Ellis throws the high, hard one, but the man in the cap will clue you in. Crutcher has intercepted in the end zone. Thus saved, Crutcher begins to stack the wood again. Here's a series of three fast cuts from the sideline featuring Tommy the Butcher. First for three, this time he goes for eight more, and finally for six on the Texas Tech four-yard line. Then using Crutcher for bait, Forba roams the wide open spaces for the score, and it all wound up, TCU 35, Texas Tech three. Well, football's a team game, and you gotta believe it. But occasionally, the educated foot of a single individual validates the name of the game, and so it was this evening when the ball of Tony Crosby's foot was the four-point difference between Owl and Longhorn. Texas goes in early as Carlisle swings inside for nine to the Texas 46-yard line, and then a few plays later from 33 yards out, Texas goes to its pet play, the power sweep that generates a single wing force in front of Tommy Ford, all the way home for the touchdown. Gene Walker makes another big play in this drive with this swing to the left. And despite a lot of shoestring trouble here, it's good for seven more to the Texas 21. 
And then McReynolds heaves a high looping pass for the home run. Deep into the end zone, Jerry Kelly shoots it down for the touchdown. Texas seven, Rice six. Rice came out for the second half with a flash, going for all the marbles. Hollingsworth hits Kelly. Jerry makes like a slippery eel on this one. 53 yards to the Longhorns, 13 yard line. But after this piece of bravado, it happens to Rice. McReynolds throws to the end zone. Joe Dixon intercepts and he gambles for a getaway back out into the open and he does get out to the Texas six yard line. So in control again, Carlisle gets the big rush. He slips the hangman's noose, tiptoes out for nine near the middle of the field. Texas, by the way, showed small liking for the forward pass this evening. Again, the Duke feeds the computer for more yards on the ground, rolling out to his left. The run pass option makes this play work and you'll see on this next one as Carlisle flings the running pass. And Knox not only makes it stick with a great catch for 29 to the race five yard line. But here the Owls man the barricade, so it's Crosby again. This makes him six for six on field goals this season, and he provides the final score. Texas 10, race six. What you remember about the Southwest Conference are not the wins and the losses, it's the relationships. Uh, the Southwest Conference was about people. It was about being a part of a, a family that was all in the same state, with the exception, of course, of Arkansas, which was close enough that together we bonded. We move now to the weekend of November 9th, Airbred Harry Day, and first to Neely's Knoll as Rice plays Arkansas. In the fourth quarter, it is still nothing to nothing, and as we pick up play, Tommy Moore punts for Arkansas. It goes dead on the Owl 42. Rice finally gets something on the fire while millions watch on TV. Rice's Russell Waite slams hard, fumbles, button, button, who's got the button? It's Rice's Gene Fleming to add it up for a 14-yard gain. Big Russ has better luck this time, and he keeps all the switches go as he cracks the middle for nine to the Arkansas one-yard line. And then, out of this mob scene on the goal line, Walt McReynolds has found Grand Central Station to make it race seven, Arkansas nothing. November has been good to both coaches Neely and Broyles, and the calendar is up for grabs as Billy Gray begins to throw strikes, first to Bobby Crockett for 11. Quarterback eligible, remember, and on this one, Gray gives to Freddie Marshall, Freddie throws the rule book back to Gray, and he's off and running down the sidelines for 21 to the race 21. And then with 50 seconds to play, Rice turns out the lights. Gray throws, but it's Gene Fleming to catch on the interception. Final score, Rice 7, Arkansas nothing. When we return, see how close the Baylor Bears came to ending the Longhorns' national title hopes. Hey, if you're planting seeds for food plots, gardens, or grass, you got to use Delta Ag Seed Coat. Just one four-ounce scoop or a packet like this can do up to 50 pounds of seed. Sprinkle the powder over the seed, stir it in, and plant your crop. That's all it is to it. You'll get more plants out of the ground quicker with better roots. This means more drought resistance, more nutrient uptake, and the result, healthier plants. Farmers have used it for years. Give your plants a great start with Seed Coat from Delta Ag. It's Toyota's National Clearance Event. The perfect time to get a clearance deal on Tundra. Tundra delivers more real-world fuel economy than Chevy or GMC. Go to toyotaownershipcost.com to compare how your Tundra will stack up against the competition. And right now, you can lease the new 08 Tundra Double Cab for just $1.99 a month for 36 months. $1.99 a month delivers the Tundra Double Cab. It's Toyota's National Clearance Event. Hurry. Offers end September 2nd at your local Toyota dealer. Prepare for one of the most explosive UFC cards of the year as one of the greatest athletes in the sport. Welterweight champion George St. Pierre puts his title on the line against 22-2 number one contender John Fitch. And wrestling powerhouse Brock Lesnar takes on the Texas crazy horse Heath Herring. Plus two of the world's best lightweights as Kenny Ken Flo Florian battles Roger El Matador Huerta. The Ultimate Fighting Championship presents UFC 87 Seek and Destroy from Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. Latin Fury, non-stop action. Their first meeting was brutal and controversial. World champion, Puerto Rican sensation, Ivan Calderon. Oh, oh my God! Mexican warrior, Hugo Cazade. Oh, and a beautiful combination. Calderon got up from the canvas to take away Cazares' title, but the former champ vows revenge. Calderon Cazares, Saturday, August 30th, live on DirecTV Pay-Per-View Channel 123. Contact your pay-per-view provider to order. Latin Fury, it's a full-out assault.
on the ninth, in that showdown between Texas and Baylor, down to the last 22 seconds for Judgment Day. Baylor took the kickoff and began to tear him up with Trule and Elkins. First pop out of the box, Don hits Lawrence for nine to the Bears 30. It's rugged going on the sidelines. This will surprise nobody, but it works. True to Elkins in the flat, and Lawrence goes for 34 more yards, and suddenly on the second play, Baylor's on Texas 37. Later on the Texas 14, Truly is still pitching to Elkins. Tipped by Dixon, Elkins catches all the same, but now it's fourth and eight, and Truly has to go for the distance. Don keeps looking for Elkins this time. Finally throws down the middle, too tall, and out of the end zone, and so Baylor's first invasion threat is thrown back. Now in the third quarter, and the Duke takes charge. The flow of the play is to the right, but suddenly Carlisle looks left, flares a pass to Joe Dixon in the left flat for 16 to Baylor's 25. Mixing the call again, Carlisle heads around the right side. Butch Maples trails this play and flips the Duke on the Baylor 19-yard line. A few plays later, Carlisle tries the same tactic for the same distance, same end result as Maples wades in to stack it, and then the steers go back to the specialty of the house, power sweep to the strong side, and Tommy Ford is the messenger to the Baylor one-yard line. And then the big bash as everybody gets in the act at the moment of truth, Tommy Stockton drives the spike, Texas seven, Baylor nothing. Late in the day, Texas is driving again. Bad luck for Tommy, Stockton fumbles. Ken Hodge recovers for Baylor on the Bears 13. Looking at 87 yards and 113 seconds on the clock. Tool goes back to work with Elkins in the right fat. Good for 18, and the storm flags are up for the Texas secondaries. Later, Tool is still tooling that Bear aircraft. Takes one up the middle on a spot pass to Ken Hodge. Baylor's on Texas 32. And then with 29 seconds to play, Tool goes for a broke to Elkins in the end zone, but Carlisle has got it right off the picket line. And moments later, it was all over. Texas 7, Baylor nothing. November 9th, SMU versus the Aggies. Early in the game, SMU's Danny Thomas kicks to a fair catch by Hargett. On the 22, the Aggies promptly move to pay dirt. First on this shot from LaGrange to Hargett. George stepped out of bounds there, but he keeps on a roll and gets A for effort. It was good for 31. Here's a fresh pass pattern. Same pitcher, but a new catcher. Budgie Ford goes down crossing, and LaGrange hits Budgie for 19 more to the Ponies' 17. Then back to the basics, where it's jaw-to-jaw -jaw combat. Ford gets a nice hole through the middle and ambles seven to the lip of the cup. And then from a yard out, it is time to blast, and they turn the job over to the fullback. Jerry Rogers slams the muck of the line. It's A&M seven, SMU nothing. And later, Danny Thomas comes out of pitching. This one gets an airlift on the way, but it winds up in the arms of Johnny Ritchie for 15 on the Mustang 42-yard line. And then... And then Tommy Sherwin rides a fine tide of blockers and is long gone. 58 yards uphill and down Dale for a pony touchdown. So it's a &M 7, SMU 6. SMU's Mac White is now pitching for the ponies. Larry Jernigan obliges with a fine catch, a very tricky run. All good for 23 yards to the Aggies, 31. And then with 40 seconds on the clock, John Ritchie steps to the tee, dumps a 17-yard field goal into the scoreboard. Final score, SMU 9, Aggie 7. November 16, and Rice is roaring on the heels of Texas and Baylor. The Aggies looking for their first victory in the conference, and wham, on the kickoff, Gene Fleming shakes a couple of hands and is gone. 98 yards for a Rice touchdown in the first 14 seconds of the game. How busy can you get? Rice 6, the Aggies nothing on the kickoff. Later, Paul Piper starts to move, and oops, Ricky Whatley gives the Aggies possession on Rice's 16. Three downs later on the Owls 14 fourth down, and Robert E. Lee kicks a 31-yard field goal to make it Rice 6, the Aggies 3. Well, the cadets completed only six passes this day, but here were two that spelled a plenty. Fingertip control is the word as Trav Reagan picks off Jim Keller's pass for 14. Later, Keller winds up and lets fly another strike, this time to Tommy Meeks, on target for 23 yards to the Owls' five-yard line, and here's the invitation the Aggies have been waiting for. A fine tide of blocks opens the roadway on the right side of the line. Reagan drives into the parking lot for the go-ahead touchdown. Aggies 10, Rice 6. Jerry Kelly has moved into the right flat, and Walt McReynolds wings one to Jerry that moves the Owls along the trail for six more. 
And then McReynolds keeps the drive alive with this piece of footwork. As Walter makes with a passing motion, the Aggies react and begin to drop off against the downfield owl, so Mac cuts out for daylight around the left side. This picks up another nine. But then on fourth down, the Aggies' Bill Ward nails McReynolds for a loss. Lights out here, and final score, Aggies 13, Rice 6. Up next, the Aggies let a victory over Texas slip away. And later, it's number one against number two in the Cotton Bowl. I think what it is is that you don't know it until you have it. Because I heard that in the past. You always hear these people being like, oh, well, she's not right for you. You'll know, you'll know. And I'm like, okay, yeah, well, you'll we know. know. <laughs> well, this yeah. is what they were talking about. When I first heard him on the phone, I thought he was really sexy. <laughs> I love this girl to death, you know, and Amory changed my life because I was going in a hundred different directions. It is easy to be with Lee. It's easy to love him. She is extremely happy, lighthearted, doesn't let things get to her, you know, and I learned from that, and I'm jealous of that, but she's bringing that into my life. I'm much more laid back and kind of go with the flow. Me, not so, so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amory allows me to be who I am. As long as I have her, that's it. <laughs> See how it feels to be matched based on compatibility. Log on and review your matches for free. eHarmony.com. On time, every time, that's Bobtail Express. At Bobtail Express, we offer affordable, reliable, same-day delivery. Our trucks are dispatched 24 hours a day, and every truck is GPS monitored. An in-house shipping department is very expensive and a lot of trouble. Let Bobtail Express be your shipping company. We have it all, reliable drivers and very affordable prices. So when you balance it all out, there really is only one way to go. Call today and you'll have your delivery today. Call now, 713-466-5224. Let us service all your delivery needs. Before you head out here, you want to know your gear has been tested, field tested, and proven. Field proven. Cabela's. Trust our gear. Head to Cabela's Fall Great Outdoor Days for top-of-the-line brands at bottom-line prices. And enter to win a $150,000 Sportsman's Dream Prize Package. Count on Cabela's, world's foremost outfitter. No one covers Texans football like FSN Houston. Join hosts Bart Ennis and Patty Smith each week for complete coverage of the Houston Texans. Every week throughout the season, Texans Huddle brings you 30 minutes of the latest news, highlights, and features surrounding the Houston Texans. Plus, you'll get expert analysis from the Texans Radio Network's play-by-play -play man, Mark Vandermeer. Texans Huddle, Thursday night at 1130 on FSN Houston. Thanksgiving Day, a day for drama as the Longhorns lay a national championship on the line against the Fired Up Aggies, a game that will live long as a conversation piece of 1963. Cadets take the kickoff, but they have to punt. Jim Keller bags one down to Joe Dixon. Joseph gets himself unraveled on the Texas 31-yard line, and from this point, Texas moves for the first score. Shoeless Tony hits for his ninth field goal of the season from 27 yards. Texas now leads 3-0. The cadets cash in on the first break of the day. Tommy Ford is hit, fumbled. The Aggies' Jim Drennan fishes this one out for the Aggies on their 27. Aggie Lightning strikes in a jiffy. Jim Keller to Travis Reagan and watch it come over the flash and a splash. Touchdown Aggies and they lead 7-3. to three. Same song, second verse, and the Aggies do it again. Texas Tony King gets faced, fumbles. Aggies Ronnie Moore is low man on this totem pole on the Cadets 44. Jim Keller goes back to the pad. Ronnie Carpenter makes a catch in a nest of bodies on Texas 48. And then it's bingo once again. Jim Keller on target. Fine running overhead catch by Hargett, and George goes all the way. Eager reception committed to celebrate this occasion, and it's Aggies 13, Texas 3. And then it happens to the Aggies. Jim Keller is the victim of the fumble bug, and it's Hicks Green of the Texas Greens to recover on the Aggie 35. Five plays later, it's Texas' turn to fire the cannon. Tommy Ford crashes home to make it Aggies 13, Texas 9. Late in the game, this is the drive that was. That jet in the clean white shirt is Texas' Tommy Wade, and he starts a bonfire. First to Green for 20 yards. It's third and eight, another big play. Wade hits Charlie Talbot for 10 more, and a setup on the Aggie 48. And then weird things begin to happen, so fasten your seatbelt. 
Wade gets chased around. He finally gets it away, but John Brotherton of the Aggies intercepts for a while, that is, until... And Tommy Stockton returns the ball to Texas on the Aggies 45. So the Cinderella kid goes back to work. Wade pitches to Charlie Talbot over on the right field foul line. It's first and 10 on the Aggie 27. And then remember this, the near miss. Wade throws the home run ball. Jim Willenborg fights it, and that's close, man. Still mopping his brow. Wade is still in there chunking. A shoestring catch on this play by Phil Harris, and it carries Texas to the Aggies' two-yard line with two minutes to play, and then Duke Carlisle goes to Fort Knox, and that's the end of the line. Texas 15, the Aggies 13. And we were a family. We squabbled, we argued, we fought, and in the end, even though a lot of us might not admit it, we loved each other. Then came the day the records came tumbling down. Don Truel became football's answer to Sandy Koufax. Baylor took the kickoff and moved promptly for an early touchdown. It started as usual on a passing note as two old pals get together. Mr. Truel, do you remember Mr. Elkins? Well, yes, indeed, for 15 yards, and the Bears are on their way. The tidy nature of the Baylor passing game is here demonstrated as Truel goes into his fake and fling specialty. High off the hat, sails this looper to Jim Ingram for 15. And this does it as Truel holds out, and Baylor leads the Owls 7-0. One of the best tricks of the day, says Walt McReynolds, as he flips to George Perry. George tidies up the joint with a 49-yard touchdown blast. Baylor 7, Rice 6. In the third quarter, the snake bites the owls. Don Elsig is hit. Loose ball. Baylor's Mathis claims it for his very own on the race 42. And then Truel decides to get away from it all. Don gets the big rush. Suddenly, he leaves the world behind. And this makes it Baylor 14, race 6. Now watch Gene Fleming give it the old second effort as he wriggles home for the score. This one wrapped it up for the day. Baylor 21, race 12. Button Bowl, time and place for the year's dream game. Texas, the nation's number one team. Navy, the nation's number two outfit, meeting amid all the pomp, pageantry, parades, and pigskin pandemonium that befit the occasion. Texas, undefeated and untied, a symphonic demonstration of the team effort. Navy, a one-time loser to SMU on this very same field with its Heisman Trophy standout. Jolly Roger Staubach, each team trying to prove something today. The Duke tipped his hand early. This was to be his day, and here Carlisle uses the stick shift. He navigates the minefields on a 19-yard rollout. The steers are on the prowl. And this is it. This is an uncertain pass, kind of wobbly as they make them, but Duke pulls the trigger. Phil Harris says, I couldn't care less. He fakes, and he scrambles, and goes 58 yards for a touchdown, and suddenly Texas Southern Navy nothing. Wham again. This would be just another set of scrambled eggs for Messrs. Duke Carlisle and Phil Harris. Carlisle and Harris style. And 63 yards later, Texas is leading the middies 14 to nothing. And then the Navy starts to move. On a hook pattern, Staubach hangs one into Gary Kellner for a nice 12-yard gain. But the Longhorn line has news for Roger on this next play. As Staubach heads to his left, Clayton Lazy gives him bad news. Bobby Gamblin recovers for Texas. Texas moves on for another touchdown. And here comes Staubach. First, Roger sticks a pass into Eddie Orr for an eight-yard gain that made it clear the Navy was committed to the airstrike from here on in. So Roger sends Orr down in that very same pattern, finds him for 14 more before Eddie gets hit on the catch near midfield. And here the quarter ends, moving in the opposite direction. It's Dave Sugaroo who skims into the fight path, picks off one for another 17, and Navy is now on Texas 29. Like a lot of talented passes, Roger has a way of running out of his passing pocket, but not this time. Roger stays in for the playing. It's Eddie Orr for another nice gain of 18, and Navy's a knocking at the door. And then Roger plays it Foxy after a good fake, rolls around for the Navy touchdown, and the final score, Texas 28, Navy 6. In 1964, the Southwest Conference had another national champion. Arkansas won the conference with a 10-0 record. Alabama, which finished the year 10 and 1, was voted the AP and UPI national champion. But the Tide lost to Texas in the Orange Bowl, while the Hogs won the Cotton Bowl. So the Football Writers Association of America awarded Arkansas its national title. To purchase a copy of the 1963